Something that I want And we'll be dancing all night long We'll live it up till morning comes Yeah, you and me, we're gonna run To chase the sun, sun, sun Yeah, you and me Welcome back, guys. A bit of a shorter break after that three-game series that Sandbox was able to take down over Gen.G. Exciting end. If you missed it, definitely check it out. But we're going to be jumping into SKT versus Afrika. And SKT definitely want to get as many wins as possible to try to secure second place. Whereas Afrika, they're fighting to stay in the LCK once again. Yeah. And this is an important match for the lower end of the standings more so than the top end. Even though you did just mention about SK Telecom, there are three teams that are going to be watching the standings for tonight here. And Afrika, they are looking to try to win. And this is coming down to do or die. There's only a few matches left that actually affect the ninth place spot now. Yeah, it's only this one and then it's KT tomorrow yeah. up against Dom one, so. It's only two matches. That's all we got left over. And we can just highlight that ninth place match. The thing I was talking about with SKT is that if they do lose 0-2, then they would be in third place. But yeah. obviously very, uh, you know, it's it's not very likely that's going to happen. But Afrika would like to win so that they could hopefully avoid some kind of tie around all the teams that are near 5 and 13. Yeah. It has been a bit of a, a scary roller coaster for Afrika Genji and KT fans. Whereas Jinair fans, the one thing that they can rejoice about tomorrow, going yep. <laughs> beyond the event horizon of a black hole. Beyond the game. Beyond the game. Nice. WCG is returning. It is. So it actually is. You know, don't uh, don't scoff at that. I saw you did an advertisement, right? I did. Yeah. WCG is coming back. That was fun. All right. Well, really enjoy that tournament. Speaking about things that are fun, SK Telecom's win streak is pretty fun for them, as they have been destroying. They've been destroying the last couple of matches. 2-1 over KT, 2-1 over Hanwha Life, Sandbox, and Jin Air. Now, those aren't the strongest of opponents, but on the side of Afrika, they almost managed to beat Kingzone, which Kingzone have been yeah. having a second win here in the LCK. Yeah, they really had. Kingzone is absolutely the dark horse of the LCK right now to even challenge in the finals. You know, those guys are looking fantastic 
As I mentioned, in the middle there, SKT, if they lose 0-2, Kingzone will get second, SKT will be third, which means that obviously the third place team here in LCK, they need to play one extra match against the winner of the wild card matchup. That will be the first match of the playoffs. So definitely a, a gigantic game for Afrika more so. You don't want to go down into promotions, especially with all those strong teams from Challenger coming up once again. And I, I really like the third point, the unstoppable top lane carry potential can't lose versus the king. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that okay. One, that one is on point. <laughs> Valdez. That one is, uh, I, I do feel like that is probably the featured matchup here yeah. for tonight. Absolutely. It said which one will have a bigger sword or something? I think that was the, the, the ending. I didn't totally get to read the sentence before it cut to the team stats here, but uh -huh. <laughs> sword is not the word I would use. Uh, I have a feeling someone's going to be carrying a plasma gun, whatever, yeah. a plasma gun hammer yeah, these thing. Guys, these uh, guys have weapons that are much greater than a sword. Yeah. So. Well, Absolutely. Team Stats, SK Telecom, first in Rift Heralds. And Afrika is second in Rift Heralds. In seventh place, they have managed to take the second amount most of Rift Heralds, which is really insane. You don't see that kind of stat every often, so often. Take a look at this highlight here. Absolutely fantastic. Mata absolutely mind-controlling the opponent to flash, even though he was already dead. I mean, if that isn't a display of power, I don't know what else is. Just a lot of things, you know? Yeah. Khan here facing off against Tana. Yeah. You got a flash behind the Aatrox if you want to survive that one. As uh, SKT against Jyn Air. They had to deal with uh, Root on his Bane. This is the last fight, so we didn't get to see Root run it down a couple of times. But it's probably a good thing. That we missed that one, to be honest, as SKT did look human in that matchup up against Shinner. This was a really nice play here by Afrika. This was putting Depth and Tushin all the way into the graveyard. Very well executed by them. And uh, this is Team's 1v4. I mean, it was, it was okay. Valdez. It was all right. Bring him into new octaves here. Yeah. As yeah, uh, Keen's a good player, guys. If you don't know, I mean, this guy has got to be top two. I mean, I don't even want to say top. Top three. two, what world? No, uh, top two. The yeah, LCK. world. LCK. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. He's the best. Hey, what about the size? He's pretty good. He is the sole reason Africa are not in ninth right now. Or 10. Or 10. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. <laughs> you know, you want to say top lane can't carry, you just got to tune into a keen game. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh... Guy's first in solo kills. It's not a mistake. It's not like he just likes to fight a lot. You he know, I... He's just really good. I have, I have some trivia for you. Okay. <laughs> so, prior to Keen joining Afrika, both KT and SKT passed on him. A while ago. Oh, I thought you were going to quiz me on something. No. Like, no, no okay, no. what's the question? No, no, no. It's just some, <laughs> that, that's a tidbit. That's scary. That is scary. He found his way here, and he's like, I'm going to prove it to all those other organizations that they made a mistake. Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh, I like that. Oh, boy. Give him the handoff. To the next generation of SKT 80 carries and Teddy Bang no longer with us here in Korea, but he's here tonight. And boy, do we love having him here just for fun stuff like that, even. Definitely got quite an applause from the crowd. Yeah. SK Telecom takes the stage. Now, the big question for me is what kind of an SKT draft are we going to get here in game number one? That's, the, that's what I'm looking forward to. Well, about before we get to that, let me answer the question of who's playing for Afrika tonight. Keen, Dread, Sun, Aiming, and Jelly. And uh, yeah, Sun coming out more and more. Dread as well. So Afrika that have been mixing up a lot of different things are slowly trying to find their 
true form as a five. I feel like this this whole season has just been Kane's pilgrimage. It's been one sick test to yeah. see and how know, strong is his mental fortitude. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny too is that uh, Summit used to be behind Keen, right? Yeah. But we never saw him because he was behind Keen. So he, he never got to play. I think he played like one game or something yeah. just randomly. And uh, again, there's a guy that's behind Keen. It's Brooke. And Brooke went into the mid lane, I believe, a couple of times for Afrika. Maybe more than a couple, maybe three or four. Yeah. Uh, but did not look great. Back maybe he's a much better top lane. Letting coin flips decide who, <laughs> who yeah. would go where on the starting roster. Or what Spirit was going to play in the support role. Or what role you he know, would play in the first place. We haven't seen Spirit in a long time. Yeah. It's been quite a while since we got to see him. But what I'm most excited about is that Afrika... They need to win, so maybe they're going to pull out some desperation tactics in terms of the draft, but also they're kicking things off on the red side, which gives them counter picks, which means Keen gets to have a good time, or so we would imagine. Yeah. I hope it's not one of those drafts where they pick his top laner as, like, in, in the first round or something. We've seen that before. Yeah, you got to give this guy a carry in the top lane that is a counter pick for Khan, who's also a green player. You gotta take this you know, serious you know if, you, if you want to avoid relegation. You know it would be a really, really great time, Brendan. Yeah. Would be if Keen has to play Kale. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I would conduct myself. <laughs> Maybe he could make you a believer. Maybe he's the one to, to show us what's up. He's the hero that. Uh, that we don't. All deserve. Kale, yeah. And all Kale does. Need. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's hop into the game. To well into the big fan to Galio. start off. Galio being the first fan, Afrika now responding with a Cali star. What? What? <laughs> you okay? <laughs> SKT, will they ban away Zoe from Sun? Or will they just allow him to have it? I remember the one game, I believe it was the Anivia, right? Nivea. Yeah. He ends up picking up. There's the Zoe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, question is, will they ban Baker's Lissandra? Silas is banned. Silas, you know. Silas Lissandra could just be the banaways. That's what I would do, you know, if I were in that role. But again, there's a reason I'm not in that role. I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a coach, by the way, just to play by play cast or doing my thing. As, uh, yeah, I mean, Baker is one of the, the only guys here in Korea that's staying consistent on Lissandra. And there's one of her counters. And now does Afrika, Afrika respect it and ban the list? Yes. Yeah. And so now, SKT, J, I mean, Jace is alive. But this is the 9.6 patch, which oh does boy. make Jace a little bit more vulnerable. And while in the previous series, Summit, was going to be the one piloting it. This time, it is going to be met by Keen. And so, unlike Cube or Roach trying to straighten up the Jace nerfs, <laughs> True King of Top Lane is here, and we'll see what he can end up doing to it. As Rise is locked in, we don't know if that'll be a top lane Aftershock Rise. Yeah. Or if Sun will be piloting it in the mid lane, but Lucian picked up for aiming. Rise is a great pick overall. Can be flexed as well. Tons of utility. Packs the damage as the game goes on. Certainly a good one in this day and age. Ezreal going to be picked up pretty quickly here. It is Teddy after all. Maybe they just lock in the Ezreal and Tom Kench and go for a super safe bottom lane. I guess a Braum would probably be another option, but it will be the Ezreal Tom for SKT. And now Afrika have the option to pick up the Braum and try to go for an aggressive bot lane, okay. but instead, Lulu. Now, if this does end up being Lulu down in the bottom lane, she can definitely add a lot of pain and pressure yeah. onto the Tom. It's not the Soraka or the Zyra that can abuse Tom quite as hard, or I guess a little, a little bit less common would be maybe a brand. But nonetheless, it could still be something. Freaking out, banning away the Elise from Clit. And perhaps Bane. they'll even take away the Lee Sin. 
I like the Bane ban. They're really giving thought to the idea that either uh, King can play either Bane or Lucian top. It's a cool idea. Rek'Sai now banned away. This does mean that Lee Sin is still on the table. Now, some of the junglers that combo well with Lulu are obviously Jarvan. Olaf is fine as well. Klet, although I'm doubtful that we'll see that here in the LCK. <laughs> yeah. Karthus, because he combos with anything. Kai'Sa. Jarvan. <laughs> and so now if you're SK Telecom, yeah. you can just pick up the Lee Sin if you really want it for Klet. And then you're going in blind against the Rise. But if you want to have a power top and mid lane, you could just pick up Syndra blind. Although... Aurelia is still on the table. It's not a champion that strikes me as Sun being willing to play. Yeah. I do love the hover of the Kai'Sa. There's LeBlanc. Okay, Faker coming out here in this game. And now that's going to end up being responded with. With Syndra. And so that will be Keen up there in the top lane piloting the Aftershock Rise against Khan's Jace. And these are very explosive team compositions. There's a lot of focus on the left side of the map. Around mid and top is where this game can really be decided from. Whereas Aiming and Jelly, they are content to just be left on an island saying, leave Clid away from us and we should be able to take over the bottom lane. Teleport for both ADCs seem to be the summoner spell of choice. As the coaches now will exit the stage. Can he do it? Valdez, can Keen? <laughs> The that's, big question. That's really the only guy he's you like, have hope in on like the side Goku of Africa. From, uh, it's like Goku from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. That's what he is. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Ezreal, Sir Thomas Kench, LeBlanc, Lee Sin in Jace is the team composition for SK Telecom. So they want to get ahead in mid and top very early on. And then the Ezreal will act as the insurance policy, but then they can transition into Ezreal Jace which is quite a lot of poke with LeBlanc being able to pick off Stranglers, yeah. having the defensive components inside of the Tom Kench. Whereas on the flip side, for Afrika, if the Rise or Syndra manage to get ahead, the ability to suffocate the SKT team composition is very easy. Whereas Lucian and Lulu, down in bottom lane, L and L, they are... Uh, Lelution. Lelu Lelution. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I like That's that. their name? That's their Tell new name, facts. Lelution. As we're gonna hop into game number one right now. Oh, yeah. Africa chance, a little bit less overwhelming. As we're gonna point out, not the aftershock. In fact, Keen, he's not gonna sit back and try to just you know survive against Khan. He wants to do the dirty damage. Comment. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Comment on Rise. Here against Khan's Jace running Aerie. And in the mid lane, Aerie, summoner spell of choice for the Syndra. Also with the Ignite. And we take a look at the runes. So Rise definitely wanting to get very aggressive. Taking Scorch. Both players are actually taking yeah. Scorch. Taste of Blood, too. You see a Ravenous Hunter here on Keen, whereas it's Ghost Poro for Khan. Khan can drop the Poro in the side brush and then ward the tri brush so that he's even safer to put on that damage. So it is actually pretty common in the top lane that you do take that run. The weird thing is that the Lulu has bone plating which is, just strikes me as so bizarre against a poke comp because poke comps don't care about bone plating, engage comps do. Not really entirely it, sure. It was a misclick, LS. Well, the scorch <laughs> on both top laners is also interesting as well. Yeah. If uh, anyone yeah. ever goes into a 1v1 or 
even in your games, just check the damage that Squirk ends up dealing on your first recall, but then also at the end of the game, you'll... <laughs> you'll never take it again. <laughs> <laughs> you'll never take it again. That'll be the end. <laughs> the first and last time. It, it can definitely be underwhelming at yeah. times. Um... Oh. Okay. Baker. Just got the chains yet. Clid's gonna end up having to reveal himself here. As we can see now that Clid has transitioned left hand side of the map. Ends up spotting Dread. Should also be noted that Dread is down both of his refillable potions already, although he is up a camp. Oh, this is real quick. Level two coming on in with the red buff, but look at all the minions already oh, doing the Keen. damage. Khan is going to take so much damage, and Keen just laughs at them amongst his horde of minions. <laughs> well, they really... What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I love her reaction at the same time as uh, the chains are going to hit the minion. But Sun takes a turret shot. Okay, this is the League of Legends I signed up to watch. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> He's gonna. What Here is we going go. On? Okay, over the wall. Keen does have flash, but he knows he's dead. That was a risky place to go for the recall, especially because the ward was just there. He just used it to get over the wall. Well. Keen ends up saving his flash, probably knows that it's better for him to save it and then try to outplay Khan later than just use it to get away right there and just deny a little bit of gold from the opponent. And so that's actually quite a good choice. Yeah. Ends up picking himself up a Dark Seal and a Fairy Charm. Aiming and Jelly are trying to get some stuff done here down in the bottom. They're actually down CS. We take a look at this, Clid comes over, and you can just see there's way too many minions. Khan tries going in, actually lands the Shock Blast, which is very well done. But Clid, minion blocked for years, unable to throw his Q. <laughs> Here we go again! Q lands on a Keen! He doesn't have Aftershock this time, but he's still going to help out on the kill! He's not going to be able to oh, survive beautiful here. movement! Okay, Blocking nice try. Clid. Yeah. Tread able to pick that one up after his nice movement. He's got his Nikes on. Well done. Well, Faker taking a lot of damage here in mid lane. There's no jungler coming to help. I don't know where Sun's going. Hello? Well, he's going to clear out the zombie Poro, but he does give up a lot of pressure in the lane. It's really keen in friends. Keen and his buddies. Keen and you know. his buddies here. We take a look at what's happening here. Keen flashes Flash forward with the rune prison. Yeah. Dread able to interrupt Khan right at the end there. And then watch picture that movement. Picture, though. Interrupting Clid, making it so that his minions can just keep helping out that much more. Oh, Meanwhile, look at how calm he is. He tells him what to do in top lane. Yeah. Nice, nice push top. Jelly. Coming into mid here, helping SK Telecom push out, or get pushed in. Yeah, and that's because the chains landed and Clint was uh, coming in to help out. So they got the flash away from Sun, and then Dread showed up again. And now Clint's going back to the top lane. No freeze. Gonna be present for SKT. Clint, really trying to force the agenda here. Up in top lane. Yeah, you know, I mean, they want to shut down the best player. It's like Camp Baker of yeah. old, except it's Camp Keen now. <laughs> and Dread now coming in here. We'll see if they look for a dive. I don't think so. He goes over the wall, channels his recall. Both junglers just backing in the top lane, just in case anything's going to happen. You can see how respectful Khan is being. Yeah. Keen probably just gonna crash that wave and then back. I am assuming. So meanwhile, down on the bottom half, Teddy and Mata doing Teddy and Mata things. They are ahead in the CS department. Still no tier on the Ezreal. We'll have to see if he actually just elects into Trinity Force, which wouldn't be that bad of an option, given that Afrika, for the most part, 
don't have many champions that are going to be slowed down or influenced heavily by an Ice Foreign Gauntlet. We'll see. Of course, grabbing that Sheen first just to deal with a rough lane of Volusion. A little bit faster as we find junglers in the river. Clid up a level. So Dread is not going to continue on to that one. Needs the Gromp to make it to his level six, most likely. And yeah, a little bit of a wall stay down here in bottom. Yeah, what do you think about the Syndra builds here from Sun? Doesn't go Corrupting Pot, goes into Doran's and two uh, health pots, and then doesn't pick up any Dark Seals, goes for a second Doran's ring. There's a lot of builds uh, that pro players do around the world that I I really don't know, to be honest, if, if everyone... And I'm being completely sincere here. If, if everyone knows why they do the builds that they do, a lot of times we'll actually see players like the Dark Seal meta yeah. that ended up popping up. You just saw a lot of people starting to build Dark Seals even in spots where they didn't it, they didn't gain anything from Dark Seal sacking. And now here we have double Doron's ring, so you get the stats from the Doron's, which should then be used to convert it into lane dominance against the LeBlanc, but then that wasn't the way that Sun conducted himself inside of the lane. And so you have to wonder, well, why is that going to end up being the itemization of choice? Yeah, it does raise some questions. By the way, Dread was level 5 for <laughs> after Gromp and Wolves, so he was actually very far behind on XP from Clid. Now he's on award. Clid is just waiting here. And Dread, oh boy. He doesn't know Where about going, this. Buddy? He's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'll, oh. just, uh, I'll just come in here and uh, steal the blue. Uh, he is going to see Clint now, though, on that control ward, so they give it away. As Khan also leaves the lane, so Dread can safely just back away and be okay with that. Okay, nice straight up in the top side. Keen taking an unbelievable amount of damage, but trades it back with the shield. Khan's out of mana now, so not that bad in the end. Both top laners do have teleport available. Keen electing to not shove the wave prior to recalling. Just ends up wanting to have a resetting wave. Sun now up a little bit in the CS department against Faker here. Gonna have his recall canceled by Faker's movement onto the right hand side, but so far at 10 minutes, we had a lot of action in the first couple of minutes, but after that, nothing too exciting unfolding. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see Dredd, who is touted as an extremely aggressive jungler, actually start off a game two and zero for once. It doesn't happen too often. Not that against him, just a freak as a team, haven't found too much success. Spirit always talked about this guy as like a up and coming new super aggressive jungler. That was, uh, you know, the younger guy. Yeah. And uh, brings in the Jarvan. Isn't going attack damage, funnily enough. We see a lot of Cinder Hulk Jarvan nowadays in the LCK as people have reverted back to that tank Jarvan status. And Keen actually getting zoned out a little bit here by Khan's Jace. Interestingly, Teddy is electing into the Ice Foreign Gauntlet. But the only real threat of... Look at Faker, he's oh, trying to man. go 1v2 and bait that one out, but the flash knockup comes in, and Clid is late, but it doesn't matter, he cataclysms the clone, and Faker gets away. Dread super low now, Faker trying to come back, the Q is gonna miss, and Teddy coming in, the chains are gonna line up, Faker dodges it again, as you can't lock him down at all, Faker gonna set up the play for two kills for SKT. And that is a massive tempo swing right now for SK Telecom, as you oh. just brought down the two primary carries on the side of Afrika. And they're gonna net themselves the Rift Carol to boot. Unless Dread gets a funny idea. <laughs> He's got a lot of funny ideas in his head. Especially after that play. As, okay, he's going in, but. He really does. Here we go, TP onto the flag. Culling comes out, but SKT are totally disengaged. So, TP and nothing happens. As the Rift Herald goes the way of SKT. 
And the way that you can look at it as a Freaka, though, is that Keen was going to have to teleport into top lane anyway. So it's not like he's TPing too far off the mark True. from where he would be going anyway. I just want to see this Faker yeah. replay. This was insane. Syndra's balls are freaking out right now. <laughs> that is, <laughs> she has already gone beyond the event horizon. And this is what's so surprising right here is that oh. Faker was marked by the Ignite on the right hand side, but Dread not able to tell which one was the real one. Faker goes right back in with the chain. Keen ends up being, being brought down. Yeah. Look at Rise, look at Rise. No flash, no flash. Line push. Yeah. Mata always on the, uh, you know, the strategy right after the play. Doesn't get too excited. As Keen wins another trade in the top lane. We've come to expect this by now. Dread, though, trying to get frisky here. Does have that red smite. And uh, Khan's like, hey, man, get out of my lane. But this could end up meaning another uh, play does go the way here of Keen and friends. Up in the top side, Faker. Nearby, but Sun also on the move, so he's not going to overcommit. Now. seconds remaining on the plates. Yeah, doesn't look like you have enough time to put it down and get some plates. It's kind of unfortunate. Faker once again in the top lane here. Flash available for Keen. Chains are going to go wide with the flash in from Khan. Do they have the damage? Yes, they do. The Mimic Chains make it happen as Faker gets another roam and another kill for his team. And the Rift Herald's being summoned, but it's just a little bit too late. Plates have fallen. So she Shelly, not going to have the best of time against this bottom tier one turret. We'll still probably end up capturing it though. As, never mind, Clid, Mata, and Teddy don't seem intent on forcing the issue. Sun and Dread were in close proximity. So this does mean that all the turrets are still remaining. We are still in the laning phase. Yeah, everything's still up and available, but Certainly does feel like SKT have got the better of this early game. Ocean Drake in the continuing laning phase also. Multiple outplays so far by Faker to make this early game just remind you of days of old, in a way. As he's doing it with the help of his friends, of course, but really some nice mechanics overall. That's not going to get stolen as Dread just going to smite it down with this second smite. And Keen gonna try to eat the Golem Camp, but he has really been put in the grave right here. You can see that Khan is about 10.5, <laughs> 10 10.6 now in levels. Oh, wow. Sealing a bunch of yeah, gold. He, he stole everything. Yeah. He's up about 500, but the difference is palpable. This early game rise, Keen now 0 and 4. All of a sudden, it feels. First Teddy. turret goes down yeah. to Teddy. And a 2k gold lead here for SK Telecom at 15 minutes. Yumu's Ghostblade was the first item of choice for Khan. We'll have to see if he just continues on into the pure lethality. Or if he ends up picking up a Black Cleaver second. As there is quite a bit of physical damage on his team that he can help amplify the damage for. And you can see already double ninja tabi in top and jungle here for Afrika. They know what they're going up against. True oh. <laughs> shot barrage comes out, doesn't end up doing all that much. Dread clears a ward. Blue buff was picked up by Teddy. Oh, okay. That's why he was ulting. Yeah. So, although it looked confusing at first, they just wanted to hand that off to Teddy as Faker nowhere nearby. And Clid will not have his time wasted. It's probably a good idea anyway. Baker down here in bottom lane to meet and catch the wave. Let's see if he... he missed both at the end there. I think he would have gotten the cannon. So it might have been close here as Dread taking out a ward is going to be pushed away. He's the guy on his team that's actually fed. 
But after that early game, hasn't really been able to find much. Oh, actually ends up chunking. Aiming as well. I mean, aiming will definitely be able to heal that back up later the Ruin King. So it's not the end of the world for him. Almost a 3,000 gold lead here, though, for SKT. As the rainy days continue in the Dragon yep. Department. We've had one Infernal? And We've had one and Infernal. One, one Mountain. Yep. And that's it. That's all you get. As Faker doing his thing, just poking. He mentioned stragglers. And as this team gets ahead, the lethality that Jace is packing alongside of Ezreal and the LeBlanc is going to get really annoying for the side of Afrika. Can they even survive against that? Archangel's now completed 14 on that rise. He's still going to be ways away from completing the Seraphs, but Afrika's team composition, they're going to be wanting to fight. <laughs> and okay. Teddy's getting a lot of value with these True Shot Barrages. It's like he planned it all along. He's like, yeah, I wasn't going for the Lulu. What did he think? Of course I was going for Gain. He's the character. As, uh, speaking of which, Sun thinks he can just get this blue buff for free. He has to flash away, and he still doesn't even get the blue. And he still doesn't even get it, yeah. yeah. Quite unfortunate as now Afrika with an engaged composition, but on the back foot are going to have to deal with the barrage that can come out of Ezreal Jace. It's going to be like a hail of arrows. You ever tried to dodge a hail of arrows? Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah? Yeah. You have experience? It's pretty common here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, just making sure. Yeah. Well, Korea is number one in archery after all. Yeah, there you go. So. That's the reason. A lot of people practicing. As it's 80 carry on 80 carry action here. Here comes the all wild growth. Wow. Music Deli almost dies. He's getting on everything. The side. We know who's going to win that fight. It is going to obviously go the way of Teddy. That is one angry teddy bear. As aiming and Jelly also being forced to recall prematurely. And forcing Keen now to come to the bottom or to the middle of the map to pick up the wave. Yeah. We, we don't see as much Ezreal as we did earlier yeah. on in the patches in spring. But uh, games like this remind you, okay, that, that was an that interesting was really, flash. Yeah. But it just reminds you of why Ezreal was so highly picked and so prized and oftentimes picked in the first rotation very often and just does insane poke damage. And if you're as good as Teddy, you're going to have some insane damage numbers by the end of the game. Well, here we are now. As Aiming and Jelly are looking to try to hold the middle of the map as Faker is just chipping away at that top tier one turret. Sun and Dread are almost there, though. <laughs> you see that bone plating that she had there? Yeah. End? Jane's going to land as just a defensive almost desperate ultimate comes out of Sun to discourage Faker from going any farther as everything's beginning to fall now. The health of Sun, the turrets on the map, mid lane goes down. Top still at being pushed after Faker wins that fight. He'll be able to take this out as well. It's gonna be another turret going over the way of SK Telecom as the gold advantage is about 4,000 here at 21 minutes. Drinker completed for Lee Sin as the second item of choice. Doesn't want to get locked up by the Syndra or the Rise. Yeah, definitely a good idea. He's going to be packing a lot of MR. We've seen a bunch of the other teams kind of neglect some of the resistances. Yeah. I feel like there have been a lot of times where you're casting you're and you're like, yeah, nobody on their team has any resistances. Take a look at SKT. I mean, there's triple Mercs as well as double Hex Drinker. Yeah. up in the top side. And this would be really good if the Lucian was really fed and he could deal a lot of damage as there's no armor really present on anyone except for Ezreal. And it's just going to be so difficult for Afrika to deal damage, especially because Jarvan is tank, <laughs> which means that a lot of his damage is just going to come from the Cinder Hulk. And it does look like he's itemizing into Black Cleaver, but... 
really, you're just going to be amplifying the damage for you and Lucian, but it's going to come online so late. So SK Telecom, they look like they have all the tools to close out this game pretty easily. We'll see if they can't get there. Faker is level 14, by the way. <laughs> just gonna <laughs> point that out really quick. Only a two-level gap yeah. in the mid lane. And if people underestimate, I feel like that's one of the most underestimated advantages that can be present in LOL. Usually, base levels can equate to almost a ruby crystal yeah. of value. But, uh, well, we have the okay. insane poke that's coming out. Oh. Even Lee Sin's getting in the fun here as Faker popping over the wall. And you mentioned this kind of mid-game poke composition that this turns into. Well, they're not messing around because Khan and Teddy alone do so much. But then once you enter in Faker and Clit, it just yeah. becomes even more oppressive. And at the highest end of play, I feel like it's also a lot easier to pilot the poke comp than it is to pilot the engage composition because of how slippery and flexible the poke comps tend to be. It's a lot more forgiving to mess up your positioning and then just get right back to shooting all the skill shots off and hitting something eventually yeah. and chipping away before the opponent's just forced to concede their ground. And so now, Afrika, they almost find themselves down 5,000 gold here at 23 minutes. It's gonna be another blue buff going away. I think this one's gonna be given to Teddy. Yeah, and why not? I mean, the guy is just carrying by himself as Baker getting his damage down. That's one is going to miss onto Dread. He's pretty tanky. Don't think it would have killed him, but it just opens the door for more and more poke that just never yeah. seems to end. Summoner's Rift hates us, Valdez. Yeah. Cloud Drink. I mean, you know, it's <laughs> the name of the game here today. As well. Oh. You just, you, you can't dodge it. It's, it's Teddy and Khan. They don't seem to miss. And this will be bottom. Future Tour potentially going down on the next wave. Faker, very close to hitting 15. Yeah. Probably just gonna steal away the golem camp. Yep, he distorts onto it. I guess the only thing that would be even more okay. impressive is a yeah. Zoe. But, I mean, LeBanc's pretty good as well. But I Can feel you, like when you're talking about, you know, th there's the Holy few, Trinity. Yeah, there's right? very few times I've actually gotten to see Zoe, Jace, and Ezreal all share a team. Yeah. And it is it's quite a sight to behold. I mean, Zoe was banned by it, SKT. They wanted to potentially stop the LeBlanc versus yeah. Zoe, I would say, in the mid lane. There's only one period of League of Legends history, I think, that really excites me more, and that was when Comet, I think, first came out, and Jin and Zerith were so popular. Oh yeah. Along yeah. with the Zir, that was a poke. That was a poke to behold. Fun days. Oh, those were <laughs> some very times. exciting times. <laughs> Jin Zerith at 18 minutes. Yeah. And uh, I mean. It's, it's it's so oppressive once you get ahead, but even individually, it's ridiculous because it's Teddy's Ezreal. We saw how many games he's played on this champion. I think it's something like 16 games, something ridiculous. Um, and of course, Khan's Jace. I mean, that's part of the right. reason why he got so famous, right? And even Baker's LeBlanc, right? You gave so many of these individually, uh, you know, skilled champions for those individual players. Doesn't really surprise me that they're having this much trouble. Yep. SK Telecom now ramping up the middle lane. Mountain Drake is going to be the next dragon spawning finally. Four minutes away from it though. Skitty, they seem very content to. Okay. That's a mini game. It's a machine gun. <laughs> He and he does it back because he has Tom Kench. Look at Aiming. He's like, please fight me. <laughs> but he won't. He won't fight him. As Dread gets so low, what he's, a cool not champion. he's not even playing the game of League of Legends <laughs> right now. He's playing dodgeball. <laughs> Tom is Tom's a wonderful support. Mod has done a lot in this game. <laughs> Let's take a look at his stat line. Of course he has. 
<laughs> oh, he has redemption now, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> God forbid you get on the Ezreal. <laughs> Alright. Look at the items, too, that Teddy's picked up. Caulfield's Warhammer. Just to get that extra little bit of CDR. <laughs> yeah, and Blade of the Rune King, like, <laughs> the machine never ending. Mata taking a quick drink from his water bottle. He knows that he, he has to have his his devour ready. He has to have a lot of, you know, <laughs> hydration in the mouth for whenever he needs to pick up Teddy. I wonder how Keen feels after <laughs> this game. I mean, he did go zero and four, but he tried to set up so many things, and he still has the most damage on his team. It's, uh, you know, kind of a sad state of affairs for him. He's trying desperately. And sure, if they can ever force a fight, he would do a lot of damage, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen. At this point now, though. Oh. Okay, this is one way to try to start a fight, as they're going to get on top of Tom Kent here. Mata going to be forced to flash, but they just suspended so much. They're going to oh, the double flash. They want Teddy so much, but they can't get him because the kick comes in, and Faker comes from behind. Look at that first damage, but Faker now got to be careful. He's going to be get, able to get away. Keen and not the best spot, but nice. Scatter the weak there from Sun to help out against Khan. The poking begins again, but they're trying to stop it here. They want to get somebody. Teddy! Finally can get the Tom Kent. The ult comes in, but a stopwatch. And look at Teddy. He was never in danger the entire fight. If you thought he was, you were wrong. As now he's looking for more. And he's not going to be able to get it. But <laughs> can he actually get Dread here? One Q, Iceborne Gauntlet, one time. Uh, it's not gonna happen, but Teddy picks up a double kill. And to believe that was his first two kills in the game. Yeah. Wow. He has quite a bounty on him, as do some of the SK Telecom members. Take another look, and this was honestly a very good start to the fight. Realm Warp into the Rune Prison on the Tom Kench. Redemption came out, everyone backed up, and then very quick and decisive. Re-engage onto Mata Faker in the back line, not able to do the most amount of damage. Khan with that shock blast softening up with quite a few members on Afrika. But honestly, it looked very close. Faker almost ended up going down right there at the end. How did he not die? I love this re-engage again too, the flash cataclysm. They're like, please, let us just have one kill. And they got it, but you know, they meant a double kill to Teddy which we kind of saw coming. And now take a look at the summoners on the side of Afrika. Doubt that Jelly's gonna be the one engaging in yeah. onto Teddy with his flash. And there's not much that he can do. Now Maw of Malmordius just picked up here for the Ezreal. Now that's gonna be almost no hope for the Syndra or the Rise to bring down the Ezreal. Oh, take a look at this. They're looking for Keen now, and they didn't even need Tom Kent. Clean as a whistle there from the side of SKT. Syndra trying to push out the wave in top lane, but oh, Khan. Khan's getting cocky. Yeah. <laughs> you can feel it. But is it going to matter? Doesn't seem that way. It's even four on four. Rise has teleported. Okay. So we'll have to see. They're really oh, man. Have to deal with that one, but Teddy once again. He's getting back on his horse. Getting on uh, his catfish. <laughs> there we go. Baker too, with the one-two punch QR, straight to the face of Dread, I think it was, and say, get away, we're gonna take the inhibitor. We didn't even need Baron. Now Teddy gonna pick up himself a red buff. That was meant for aiming, most likely, but was not gonna matter. No, it probably never was. Yeah. Take a look at how this all happened. Keen pushing up into the wave, not respecting the Tom Kenshaw. Regardless, Mata coming in anyway, just for good measure. And then Khan, trying to just quickly run into mid lane, probably not expecting all the members of Afrika to just be camping there. It does mean he will eat his second death of the game. 
was kind of disappointing for his KDA, but that's just about it. Didn't have too much of an effect on the game. Uh, speaking of KDA, Keen is 0 and 6. Who would have thought that Keen hopping onto the rise would die this many times? But it's a sad state of affairs this time around. <gasps> well, Lucian has this fourth item. Lord Dominix is the item of choice. No more crit actually completed for him, so he just yeah. has the Phantom Dancer and the Infinity Edge. A little bit surprising. Especially because there's not a lot of HP stack on the side of SK Telecom. So we'll have to see what Afrika want to do in the next team fight. As honestly, it's, it's beginning to feel like they just need to pull the trigger and try to hard engage. If you try to go blow for blow in an extended poke war, it's just not going to work. Yeah. It and never will. Yeah, and because we're we're reaching the four or five item stage now, two manning the Baron is very possible with just a least in Ezreal or a least in Jace. Poor Jelly. Do you think that he's Jelly right now? Yeah, he's pretty Jelly. Is he? How Jelly? Wish he had Teddy on his team. I like that. The Ezreal is uh, it's pretty good in the hands of uh, that player. <laughs> Three minutes until the Elder coming up. SK Telecom are being extremely careful here. You know what would have been nice instead of the Lulu was a uh, Braum. We didn't get to see that. We did not get to see that. We did not get to see that aggression. When, when I saw the Lulu pick, I thought that we were going to see some other type of hyper carry coming yeah. into the game. But that was not the case. I do like that they tried to punish the Tom Kench pick, but they really didn't. <laughs> as bad as they could have. But it was nice to see a little bit of innovation at least starting to make its way to Korea. Faker! Oh boy, Faker. What have you gotten yourself into? As uh, I feel like we've seen this before as well. Nice surprise from the left side there from Dread. And now that they have the LeBlanc, certainly is a chance for Afrika to get something on the map. And now Afrika making their way over to the Baron. They might just go for a desperation play. Yeah. Uh oh, teleport. Here we go. Coming, coming in. It is Rise. He has to get uh, into the pit. But taking a ton oh, of damage to no. the back. They need aiming to do damage, otherwise there's no point. But he lost half his health bar immediately just to one shock blast. That might actually just be all she wrote, even though Look it's a Clint. 4v5. Yeah. It's not going to matter. They're missing so much HP. Yeah. Just but, wrapping yeah. his hand around them. And so oh, oh, Aerie goes down to Airy. Oh, that poor Lulu. And now it's SKT's Baron if they want it. Aerie. They're absolutely going to start it. Airy wanted picks for himself. That's what was going on there. <laughs> you know, after the TP2, there you go. And Cox looking for more. Going for the dunk. He's going 1v3-2, and Mod is there to the rescue with the flash. Eddie. SKT just styling on them tonight. Faker going for the flash, too. Double flash over here from Afrika. Trying to get that follow-up kill, and Aiming does a lot of damage, but it just doesn't matter. As Khan is coming in from behind. Flash into the backside. And poor Keen, you're dead again. As SKT putting on a master class here in game number one. And that's going to definitely be all that they wrote. Jelly. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, holding, he's holding down Say the board. That. Nah. No, Jelly. Oh, you got a kill. You got a kill. Oh. Oh. They got two kills. Oh, yeah, OK. That's good. You redeemed good. himself. Yeah, you got to improve the KDA. Uh, guys, the game isn't over yet. Um, uh, what? Wait. Yeah, the, the inhibitor respawned, so. Uh, Observers. We're ca oh, cut the music. <laughs> guys, <laughs> the music. Thank you. You think SKT is gonna sit here and not pad their <laughs> stats? What are you? What are you doing? Yeah, restart the music. Thank you. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. You know what that, <laughs> that felt like a WWE moment. Yeah, it really did. That was pretty good. <laughs>
Um, Almost felt like BM, but uh, in the end, SKT put on their own set of BM. Well, that was a game, LS. Yeah, it was, it was quite a game. We got to witness Ezreal and why he is oftentimes not allowed to be picked by certain players. Teddy's one of them. Teddy is definitely one of them. Teddy is one of the Ezreal players in the world that you should not give Ezreal to. Def yeah. being another Ruler. one. Yep. One of the best Ezreal players is not in the LCK. Yeah. Cray. Moment of silence. Sad times. Yeah. Sad times. Still around, still hanging around. He's still around. around. Sometimes yeah. he shows up at the venue. Yeah, he does. So, that's, uh, it was a pretty impressive poke performance. And honestly, I think it really just, this game number one really showed how SKT want to approach this match. I want to just make sure that Keen can't play. Yeah, I mean, Clay just sat in the top Keen lane. Keen can't play. <laughs> He's keen to <laughs> have a team behind him yeah. eventually. Uh, Teddy got one. Yeah. Finally got one. He's looking good now. SKT on a roll. And he was probably just feeling really dreadful. He looked outside today. There was no sun in the sky. You say he looked dreadful? What? <laughs> no. Oh, man. <laughs> what do you think I'm aiming He's for aiming here? For <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, You're boy. totally jelly of where I'm going yeah. with this. 32,000 damage. That's uh, more than double the Lucian. And a lot of damage overall. Those are the Ezreal numbers we like. We love, actually, in the LCK. I really do think that Ezreal gets the MVP. I think the only other candidate for it, uh, I guess it could be Clint. Because he did get the early game stuff going. He did put Keen basically into the grave uh -huh. early on. Although Faker did help out a little bit with that, but. It's <laughs> no. a sad. Sad camera shot, but I'm yeah. glad our production knows exactly <laughs> what, where to look on the side of Afrika. Yeah, well. it's, it's only him, basically. As uh, doesn't really feel like anyone else was really able to stand up to the side of SKT, and SKT knew that as well. Yeah. As you're highlighting, they put Keen in the grave, and they put Game One in their pocket, and it looked unbelievable doing it. Uh, I think that Ezreal should be banned for game two. That's what I would recommend to Afrika, just a little piece of advice going into the next one. We'll join you guys after a quick commercial break. We'll be right back.